Hi guys, welcome back. Ryan here from the London Craftsman and thanks again for watching. And today's video is all about levelling up bearers, two pieces of timber that run along the floor to level up the floor, ready to give you a nice level platform for anything you put on it. For example, an alcove unit, a bookshelf, a wardrobe. Anything I do um, that requires levelling up um, or fitted furniture going on that is not loose, for example it's fitted and not freestanding, I will put it on bearers. So I don't use the kitchen legs, you know the little twisty legs, don't like that idea, it doesn't give you enough strength at the bottom, you need far too many fixings. Um, I always like the bearer um, idea, which you may have seen in my um, videos in the past, so it's two timbers back and front that level up um, using packers as you can see here we've got a selection of packers to give us the heights we've got six mils 18 mils three mils and we've got some little one mils as well we're going to use so the idea of today's video is leveling up these two bearers to be able to level up this unit which is an alcove unit you can see the other half over here and this little uh, wardrobe unit um, they're going to go in this corner of my son's bedroom as you can see it's a box room really small struggling for space in here um, but we are just reusing these just for temporary use until we make something to fit in this space but we've got so much lego we've got about two tons of lego and we've got our one-year-old's stuff lying around everywhere all the hanging so we need a space to put it for temporary and we've got these two units um, just lying around. We made about six or seven pieces for a market. Um, it's a market in St Albans where we were going to showcase our work, you know, get our name out there, show them what we do, maybe try and book up some work, show them the pieces that we can make as prototypes. So these have been lying around for about a year. We never end up using them. So we've got an alcove unit and a sort of little small wardrobe unit that's going to go in that corner so basically we're utilizing these so they just don't go to waste until something is made in that space when i have the time to make it so first things first i've measured my bearers and i've got 1.1 long bearers so i've got this unit here which is going in the corner which is 700 there or thereabouts and i've got this which is 400 so i'm making this 1100 so i've got a little bit of space in between the two units so they're not crammed up together so that's the first thing that we need to know. And these are two by one sawn tantalized bearers. You can buy anything you like. You can buy two by twos, three by twos. You can buy two by ones like this, or you can buy um, planed and prepared. So they're nice and smooth. I just like the fact of using these because they're cheap, they're small, they're low profile, they're easy to fix down. Um, and all they're really there for is to connect all your spaces together to give you a rigid platform. Because ideally, I mean, you could, in theory, just put these blocks up wherever you want them. You know, you could just get a stack of these in each corner of your floor. Little block. And you could just have three or four piles of these on the floor and then put your units on them. But if you need to get your units on and you need to slide them on, move them around, then just screwing these down to your packers is essential, really. It just gives it a little bit more strength. Plus, once they're on the bearers, you can then just screw anywhere down through your units in any position to get your fixings down to the bearers. So that is the reason why I don't use feet, like the 100 mil kitchen feet. There's not enough strength in there and you can't really get fixings. I'm always using the bearers, which I've been using this technique for about 10 years now and I'm not changed. Don't need to change it. Like I said, you can use any material, but I tend to stick to two for one tantalized. So what we're going to do is come in here. And we've got two levels. We've got a short level to level the floor this way, just to see our levels, to see where the high point is. And we've got a long level to see what our high point is this way as well. You don't want to use a small level. If you're trying to level, see where the high point is, along this whole floor, you won't want to use a small level. You want to use the longest one possible. If you haven't got a really long one, use a really straight edge or buy a straight edge and put your level on that. But ultimately, we've got a small space to deal with here. 
what we ne need to do is put this level down and find our highest point because that is where we're going to start with. So the level needs lifting up there. There we go, that's the level. It's telling me over here is our high point. So we're going to start with packing up from this corner. Let's go ahead and check the depth as well. So level there. Looks, bit, looks pretty spot on. Spot on. It's leaning is up a bit on this side by a mill. And then what have we got? It's spot on. So we can just level up any way on this in this particular plane. We don't need to sort of pack up the front or the back in any particular order. So what we're going to do is get our long level. Use that in a minute. We've got some masking tape here already, little pieces. Um, and a tape measure. So as we've got one unit going here, which is 700 and another one 400, we need to put these blocks of packers directly underneath where there is a side or a division. So wherever the load is being taken down, that is where you're gonna to have to put your spacers. So I'm gonna put two here, where the left-hand side is, one, two. Then where the two units meet in the middle here, I'm gonna put another two. And then where they end at the end is another two. So six sets of packers. And what I generally do is have about 50 to 60 mil in height to the start of my unit. So including the timber, let's just say 60. We're gonna go for thereabouts. We've already got 20. So we need to make up another 40 mil in height with our packers. Okay, so that pack can go directly at the back because our first bearer, what I do is I come about 40 to 50 mil away from the skirting. So when we're fixing through the unit, we don't have to put that screw right at the back of the unit. Um, we can come 50 mil in from the inside of our unit so we've got nice looking fixings. So let's measure 50 mil to the start there. So that is where our bearer would ultimately be. And we'll do the same on this side because we've got these bearers to suit. That is going to be in line. This goes all the way up against the skirting board. And let's measure 50. So there we go. So now we've got that. So let's just make some marks with our masking tape. So we want to put a bit of masking tape where the last pack is going to be. And then I'm going to put a bit of masking tape on the front of the bearer. And again on this side as well. Front of the bearer, roughly there. And to be honest, I don't really need to know where it is going to be in this in this plane because it's going to go up against the skirting. We also have a 700, so let's measure 700, which is to this knot here. I need a packer around this position here, underneath. So now I put a little bit of masking tape here just to carry this line on, so we've got a little position for this one now so we know that is the front of the bearer we know our packer here we can use any that we like let's go back to using that one there that is the front of this bearer we need to know where the front of this bearer is so all we need to really do is get a level put it up against that tape and that tape or packer and packer there we go and place it on so we've got the center of the bit of the packer here and we've got the front edge of the packer. So let's get another 18 mil. That one is going to go roughly here. This is center of the packer and the tape is the front. So there we go. These two are a little bit different because that was the front and that was the front. So now we know our positions. All we really need to do is start on the left and we get our 30 mil. So any floorboards that you've got down are most likely going to be 18 to 22 mil thick. So I've got 50 mil screws here and I've got 30s. My first set of packers into timber is always a 30. You may get away with a 40, but it's a little bit risky because we're using 18 mil packers. 18, if you've got an 18 mil floor, four mil of this of a 40 mil screw can go through. And if you've got pipe, there you go. You can have a bad day. So 30s is ideal. All I do is just pre-drill one hole, 
Get a 30. I've got my impact drill here, so it's going to be noisy. And that is the base of my first packer to build up on. So all I need to do is continue that on every packer. One there. So now we've got that, we've got our base effectively. Let's see what our levels are like. Actually pretty good. You've got about a mil gap in between this level and plus it is still high, it wouldn't have changed anything. So what we need to do is build up to our 40 mil level. Let's go and get some smaller ones. One, two, three. So one on top there. One on top there, one right in the corner. Two of these make 36, I'm not fussed about that. Four mil difference is not gonna worry me. And like I said, it is high on this side. So we do need to pack this up by about three mil. So next thing I'm gonna do is get a three mil packer and test it. Spot on, yeah. And my floor is nice and sound. You have to make sure that your floorboards don't move. So you can just give them a wobble where your bearers are down and making sure it's not gonna change the level. Because ultimately when you put your weight down with your wardrobe or whatever you're fitting down, it's giving you a false sense of level at the moment if there's no weight. So you need to just push that weight down, okay? Right, so we know that's nice and level. Now we've got a gap here. We can go ahead and get a few, um, two mils. A few one mil, shall I say, and take up that void. Uh, if it's three of them all together, I can just use a MDF. Yeah, that's fine. I'm only going to go ahead and use a an MDF one because I can. These are really handy as ones. So there we go. There's no wobble on it. So it's not pivoting on the middle, it's touching all three at the same time, and it's level. So all I really need to do now is put the small three mils underneath to sandwich them. And now I can start using 50 mil screws. I can drill through the whole pack. Okay, so now let's go and get the 50s. One. Three, so they should all be roughly in line with each other here. So when I put the bearer on, like so, they're all level at the front, okay? Like I said, we've still got a 50 mil gap between the skirting and our bearer. So when we put our unit in and we fix in, that screw's not buried right at the back near the backing. Okay, so that one's done. Before we screw this one in and make it complicated to put the next one on, let's measure this alcove unit. I need to go by the smallest depth unit. I've got a 500 unit and I've got a 400 unit, but I don't want my bearer sticking out. So I've got to go by the smaller unit. That is 380 deep. So if we come back here. So the front of the unit, so if the back of the unit was touching the skirt in, the front would be here, 380. I need to make sure that this bearer is at about 320, 330. So when I put my unit on, I've got space to put a plinth detail underneath and have that tiny bit of space to put a little trim. So I'm going to go for 330 to the front of this bearer. Okay, so let's go ahead and mark that with the masking tape. Here's some I made earlier. So we've got from the skirting here, 330. Again, it doesn't have to be precise precise within a couple of mil because it's none of this is going to get seen it's just for general support 
that's 330 and I can use my bearer as a guide for when this pack is going to stop right where's that masking tape gone need two more pieces okay so let's put a look here and that is our front and that is our front let's go ahead and put a piece here so we're we know where the middle one's going as well what we need to do now is continue with the same as what we did at the beginning we put our base layer down any size will do it doesn't matter you can't see it this one's got to be in line and i'm just doing it by eye because it's not critical and then let's use another big one over here it goes in between the two masking tapes like here there we go let's go ahead and pre-drill 30, up, one, two, three. So again, don't use anything more than 30s for the first base layer. Very noisy these. Have a don't wake up, Lily. See a slip? Yeah. One, two, three. There we go. So we've got our base layer. So what we now need to do is get another set of packers. One, two, three, and get our smaller level. Wherever that went. Jubbly jubbly. So now we need to check the levels this way. That is spot on. All right, so what I do is when I'm leveling up my front bearer, I always tend to lift this pack front packer up by one mil compared to the back so i put this out of level by one mil for example if that was level i lift up the front by about a mil and the reason i do that is if you just take into account how this floor is made you've got your joists that run into the wall most likely i'm right in the corner here so there's going to be no movement in these joists that run into the wall but if they're running from wall to wall and it's got big span over time, the weight of that wardrobe could make your joist deflect by a mil or two. So that's the reason that if I'm doing something big, like a massive wardrobe, it's really heavy, I will lift that level up a bit and pack up the front bearer to compensate for that. But as these two are really light weight, I'm just going to stick with making this front bearer completely level with the back. I hope you understood that. <laughs> did you? Not if you did. Good, good. All right, so we just checked that one and that was completely level. Um, there's two ways we need to check. We can keep on going and do it this way. I know there's a three mil packer there, so let's go ahead and try a three mil packer here. Okay, that's too much. Two ones, one mil, one mil. Yeah, that's spot on. So, and now I'll check this one as well. That's well out, so let's put a three mil in there. Spot on. Lovely jubbly. Now I've checked it that way and it's within the bubble, quite precisely. Let's check it this way. Yeah, is it there or thereabouts? It's within the bubble, it's a quarter of a mil out on the bubble, not even that. So I'm happy with that which means we can go ahead and fix all these packs together. So this one's pretty simple. That one just gets fixed directly all the way through to the other one. Remember we're using 50s. As we've used two mil in here, I'm gonna sandwich it in between. Like so, drill through the pack. And again, I've got a three mil here, swap them over. Pre-drill as much as long as your screw, otherwise you're going to find it tough to put that screw in. You've got a 50mm screw, pre-drill 50mm. Three. 
Job done. So we know they're all completely level now, so it's going to be really simple. These just go directly on the top, like so, in line with the front, as you know. Okay, and the uh, front barrel. There we go, put that in position. We've got them all in line. I mean, sometimes you look down the bearers, they have got a little bit of a curve in it. But I wouldn't worry too much about that, but there you go, they're there or thereabouts, um, which is more than we need really. It's accurate enough for our base. All I'm gonna do now is fix down. Always pre-drill. I'm using 50s as well. Again, it gives it more strength because we're screwing all the packs together again. Giving it more strength. One there, one there, so. off there I could have bent the bearer I think it's got a little bit of a twist in it but it's still gonna be absolutely fine go so we should have a completely level surface now let's double check level level and we can check this way as well yeah I'm happy with that a little bit yeah there we go there's a little bit back there yeah that's fine there we go. I'm happy with all of those. They're all within a um, fraction of a millimetre, which is level enough. Um, so while you're there, if you hang on for two seconds, let's go and put this in position. You can see the way it just sits on the barrels. Mind the bed. Yeah. one and then we've got the wardrobe as well there we go and this we can lift this up incredible hulk let me just make that in line with the, the bearer there this alcove unit it's going to sit on the top, so this is the top half. On the top, like so. I will need to pull that out to get fixings at the back. And then I've got a few trims to go on. I've got a side panel here, and I've got trims to go all the way around, cover this gap up. But there you can see the bearers are doing their job. Like I said, the back bearers are 50 mil in the way away from the wall, which means I can get my screw within a nice distance in the corner here. And all you need to do is just put a 30 mil screw in or a 50 mil in pre-drill screw down to your bearers. You can see this unit is quite far forward from this front bearer, but like I said before, it's enough for now. I could put another small bearer on the front, but this is the reason why I put a packer on a joint, is so it could take the load. I don't think it's going to be moving anywhere when, once it's fixed down. And it should be absolutely fine, but that is how I do bearers for anything, whether it's an alcove unit, window seat, anything fitted, I use this system. All you need is just a set of packers, so if you're in a workshop or if you're um, just a handyman, whatever, just make yourself up a load. They last ages. 30 mil screws, 18 mils, 6 mils if you need them. So some small shims, masking tape, 
some 30s and 50s like I said, tape measure and a drill or two. You don't only need one really. But yep, yeah, I've got to crack on and finish this, get it fixed down, some 50s, um, put the shelves in, put the trims on, put the doors on. But apart from that, I hope, I've hoped, I hope you've learned something from it. And if you've got any questions, just fire them at me. Um, if you are enjoying the content, just hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell button as well. It all helps. Um, yeah, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Ciao for now.